Okay, yep, and we're live. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining the live today. I have Neil Elliott here from Pattern Bank, and he's going to answer all of your questions about how to be successful selling on Pattern Bank as a pattern designer. So um, first, Neil, could you just like introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit of the history of Pattern Bank? <laughs> Sorry, my cat. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, as you said, I'm Neil Elliott. I'm one of the directors of uh, Pattern Bank Limited, um, and my background sort of goes back goes back to textiles. I, I studied textiles. I specialised in weave. Um, I've had a sort of varied career where I've sort of picked up nuggets of knowledge and here and there. Worked in retail um, for a provocative, a provocative uh, designer brand called Red or Dead uh, back in the sort of '90s, late '90s. Um, and then basically working for um, designers as well. So working for the High Street, UK High Street, M&S and um, some other um, brands in, in the UK. Also worked on sort of licensing product as well with sort of Scooby-Doo and Teletubbies and stuff like that. So I've, I've sort of had a varied um, career um, and then moved into trend. I was, I, uh, you know, got a job at WGSN. I don't know if you've heard of WGSN. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with WGSN. Online yeah, trend, yeah. right? Pretty much right from the beginning of WGSN. It's where they, uh, it was, it was just at the start of internet where they had like they used to install satellite dishes to your, to your, uh, your roof to to um, your company to get the 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 files in and stuff. So it was, it was way. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Of, uh, of WGSN um, and started on trends, basically laying out trends and then moved up to heading up the print and graphics directory uh, for WGSN for uh, I think about three, four years at the beginning there. Um, and then from trend moved back into product to work for a um, big brand called uh, Timberland. So I headed up the uh, print and graphics for global apparel for Timberland, so which are you know, great uh, global job, um, you know, where I sort of saw the production from sort of design, trend, down to design, down to production, down to onto um, shop floor. So it was all great knowledge. Um, from there, actually got headhunted by another trend company called Stylesite, which was sort of like a, um, a sort of more techie version of WGSN, the US based in New York, a guy called Frank Bobber that set uh, Starsight up. So he headhunted me from Timberland. Again, worked on trends there. So, you know, the way I, my, my uh, career's worked, it's sort of been sort of pr uh, retail, product, design, trend, back to product, then back to trend. Uh, our last job was uh, Avery Dennison where I headed up trends. So it's sort of, you know, trends and product and uh, textiles and print and graphics. Um, so that's sort of, you know, where I came from. Um, and the idea of the, the print, print and graphics directory at WGSM was one of the third or fourth hit uh, directories on the site. So I knew that there was something there. So for me... It was something I always wanted to do um, of building some sort of print graphics trend studio online. Um, so that's where I that's where it sort of started and it was hatched back in when I was at WGSN and Style Site. Um, but we didn't actually go live until 2012 when we started as a as a blog. So, you know, I knew from my experience at Style Site how to get yourself noticed on on online so we started a uh, a blog pattern bank blog just inspiration trends then started to selling trend reports at sort of like lower prices that, that to wgsn and some of the other trend uh, organizations okay. so we sort of from there we sort of you know people start picking up on us and 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 sort of saw that there was something going on and it was specific to um, print and pattern um so that was 2012, and then we start from there selling trend reports as well, and then and then we built the studio in 2014, and that's where that's where we're at now, or that's what the studio is, you know, um, actually where you can upload designs, um, B2B sites, so it's for businesses that they can actually buy um, design licenses. So that's where you know that's where the start came from, and and we've sort of I feel 
revolution, you know, actually changing the way that people buy uh, prints now on, you know, uh, in the industry. So putting everything online, buying 24 um, seven, you know, globally, there's no, you know, there's no downtime. Prints are always selling. Um, and we've mixed the sort of trend and the studio together as an online sort of entity. Yeah, that's so interesting. So do you feel like there's maybe a limited um, time frame on how long trade shows will be around? Or do you think they'll always be around? Because if people can just buy online all the time, then they don't have to wait for the trade show or I don't know. And it can be expensive as well. And with COVID, we can, you know, we're kind of seeing everything you know, everyone's still surviving, but moving to more of an online model, and you were already ahead of the curve with that. So do you think that's... I, I think COVID sort of speeded things up, you know, five, six years, you know. Um, I think there always will be, you know, like retail, there always will be trend, uh, trade shows. And I think people, you know, when, when I was working for, uh, you know, brands, you want to get out of the office, you want to get and see people, you want to touch and feel materials or look at prints or see trends you know see the color boards at premier vision or whatever so i think there always will be they'll, they'll definitely be back um after covid but i think there'll be a smaller scale down thing i think yeah and it, it sounds like maybe even it would be more of bigger companies or bigger maybe agencies that are showing at trade shows because if there's a site like pattern bank that you know, can compete with that, then it's a lower barrier to entry for pattern designers that might not be able to invest in an expensive trade show, because I believe Surtex is about $5,000, you know, just for the show, not counting flight and hotels. And that's a lot for one person, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, they, they are, they are expensive, you know, um, and, you know, they can be good, they can be okay, you know, you don't, you don't know how good they're going to be. So it's, right. yeah, they're very expensive. Okay, so could you please explain the process for signing um, signing up to Pattern Bank and kind of getting started? Because some people had questions about that. You know, they were asking me, you know, what what types of files they should submit, you know, if they should be layered, you know, things like that. So to be able to be approved on Pattern Bank, like what's the process? Yeah. Um, okay. So you know, it's it's hopefully very simple. We try and make we try and make everything as simple as possible, and you know, it's free to sign up. You can sign up and, and look at Pattern Bank for free um, and you can you can um, apply as a designer completely free. You know, with, there's no charges in it. Um, all you need to do is hit the apply to to be a designer, um, which is on the profile. It just drops down. It will say apply to be a designer. Um, and what we're looking for, we are, we're looking for professional creative designers, you know, um, designers that sort of have a, a passion for for textile design uh, that are you know quality and they look at things commercially what's going on um, we don't really want sort of people that just experimenting with sort of paint and stuff like that we're, we're looking for solid professional creative designers um, people who know what they're doing <laughs> know, know what they're doing you know they don't have to have years of experience but we just want creative professional designers that, that upload quality designs that our buyers will will, will be relevant to our buyers basically um, mm -hmm. so when when they when they actually when you sign up to pattern bank you just have to give your we need some information about where you live and stuff like that just so we know that you're a real person um, we it, it's you know I, I, I take it as in sort of like as you're if you're going for a job or if you're going for an interview at one of the the bigger textile design studios, you know, you take along some of your best work. Um, you know, we we say we upload we say to upload ten to twelve designs. Um, we've got sizing on there and how big they should be. They can upload JPEGs, PNGs, PSD files, and vector files. So we can we can see our team who look through the applications can sort of see what the design how the designer works. You know, so it isn't just sort of like two layers. You know. Um, so, so we can look at, look at their work basically. So you really, you want to see, we want to see the sort of best, best of their work, you know, as that, as if you were going for an interview, really, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's, the, that's the, the crux of it. Um, so yeah, just, just stuff that, that we feel is also would be relevant to our buyers. 
Um, unfortunately, not everyone fits that that bill and, and is right for Patent Bank. And I'm sure there are, you know, there are other studios and marketplaces where they can sell their work. But but we need to. We are we at the beginning. We 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 did let a lot let a lot of people in and and designers and stuff. Um, but now we are very picky. You know, we we want just sort of professional creative designers on board. Um, mm-hmm. So not being you know nasty or anything, but just we want stuff that the the designers that, that are good really. Yeah, no, you want the buyers to come to Pattern Bank for high quality stuff. You want to be that high quality site. That makes perfect sense. So when people apply, they need to, their JPEGs, I'm assuming, need to be 300 DPI. Um, PSD or AI files should be in layers, or, um, things like, things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we have like a maximum of 200 megabytes that they can upload on the, on the application. But, you know, they're, they're just used for, for our team to analyze and just check that they're they're right for the for the studio basically gotcha okay so can you please explain the different types of licenses that are available to buyers on pattern bank and what they mean for the artist okay so there's two licenses on pattern bank that we have a non-exclusive and we have exclusive license so the non-exclusive is broken into three uh, licenses Um, there's a personal license which is the lower uh, $55 license, which uh, obviously is non, non-commercial non use, so they can't use it on anything commercial. Um, it's just for personal use, and they get a JPEG file. Uh, and then the other two um, non-exclusive licenses are commercial, up to 500 units, and commercial unlimited. So with those licenses, if they're bought, they're able, the buyer is able to use those designs on, obviously, the up to 500 units they can use that design on up to 500 units um, and they stay on the site um, they actually get the um, editable file so they get a jpeg and the layered psd or vector file um, but they they stay on the site so that they're the non-exclusive uh, licenses so the the commercial uh, up to 500 is 95 dollars the buyer buyer uh, can can actually uh, purchase it for and then the unlimited is $135 so that's the non-exclusive the ones that if they're bought they stayed on the site and other buyers can buy them as well so you can you can keep making money on a on a right so they can be bought as many times as people buy them okay uh, and then the the higher level is the premium exclusive license um, which are basically exclusive license one the, once the buyer um, purchases those, they're removed from the site, so they actually own the design outright. Uh, they get the JPEG, they get the layered file, uh, Photoshop file or Illustrator vector, and they can use it for unlimited runs. Uh, and that's the higher price point of three fifty dollars uh, for the premium exclusive. So you know, we for for our buyers, it's it's quite a nice mix of licenses that they can use they can either go for something that that's slightly cheaper um that they're not that they're not worried that it might be used on something else or they can go for the the higher price premium where once they own that uh, design it's pre- basically taken off the site and they own it outright like like you do when you go to a trade show um, and if something's sold and they take away the um you know the bit of fabric or, or the actual uh, cd or whatever it is Right. So at a trade show, there's the option of a buyout and licensing. So the exclusive design is kind of like a buyout and they actually do they own the copyright after that, after they buy? the Yeah, it's pretty much license? it's pretty much owned by the, the buyer. Yeah. OK. And then if it's the standard license or the non-exclusive, the designer still owns the copyright to that artwork. Okay. But it's obviously it just stays on the site, and it can be it can be purchased uh, multiple times. Right, and the it's the, just a n- nice mix of you know the the way that you know at trade shows or you know um, uh, textile design studios where where you buy the design once, it just gives the the opportunity for buyers to to purchase something cheaper, um, and you know and the designer can keep make, making money out of it basically. Sure, and if they're not totally confident, they can kind of test it out, you know, for under 500 units um, and see if it sells, you know, see if it does well. But if they're 
you know, if they're a bigger company or they're worried about, you know, their competition maybe buying the same thing, then the exclusive license is available. So that's and, that and on the site we actually we have a we have it in place where if someone buys it as the, the up to five hundred, they can extend the license. So they can just uh, click a button and then they pay the extra amount to take it up to the higher uh, level. Perfect. Yeah, I think someone's actually done that with one of my designs. So and they must have tested it out first and then bought the um, the unlimited. So that's nice. Um, okay, so it's interesting that Pattern Bank kind of started as a trend blog. I didn't know that, but I absolutely love the trend page on Pattern Bank's website. And um, so my next question was going to be, how important is it for artists to actually follow trends? Um, and in general, do your stats kind of confirm that these trends sell better on your site overall? Yeah, trend, you know, uh, coming from sort of my background and, and working in trends and working in product as well, you need to, you know, buyers need to know what the next big thing is. You know, they're not, they're, very rarely they're just going to sort of pick a, a design and go, yeah, that's the one. They, so the, our trends, uh, you know, like you say, from the beginning where we started as a trend as an inspiration, that sort of always followed through and come through to the actual site and the studio where we still have a trends area. We have a catwalk area as well because people want to know what's happening on the catwalk. You know, um, they want to know what Gucci's doing for spring, summer 22 or whatever. And also they want to know out of those that season what what are the key trends that are happening you know where do we need to buy into what do we need to look at so for us trends is is very very important you know it's it's a very important part of the site hence we have it you know in our top navigation um and i would say yeah to for designers you need to you need to look at trends you need to look at trends you need to look at what's commercial um what's you know selling out there what what um cool brands of using on their on their garments you need to always be looking you know I, I from day one when I uh, started my career I'm like a sponge where I need to keep looking at things I need to look at not just catwalk you want to look at um, architecture what exhibitions are going on at the moment what's happening in music there's loads of things and you know, it's not just a fashion thing it's anything from home to um, you know accessories and giftware you need to you need to look at what trends are happening, whether they're mainstream or whether they're sort of like smaller trend things going on. It's always good to look at trends, and and we say to our designers that are on the site, you know, definitely use our trend pages. They're they're free. You know, we 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 used to charge for them, which was a, a minimal amount. Now they're free, and we use that as a sort of um, a marketing sort of thing to get the buyers to come in, look at our trends. And then on the trends page is, you know, we, we actually pull in the designs that the designers that work into those trends. So say uh, we had um, Subdued Tropics, one of our um, trends um, recently. So when designers name their, their prints as Subdued tro Tropics, we put them into that trend. So they basically, there's another area for where um, buyers can look at the, the trends and actually buy designs that fit into those trends. So, so yeah, definitely got to look at trends, check out Patent Bank's trends, work into them as much as you, you know, you can, um, tag them, title them with the trend name. And then when, when our team are, are looking through the uploads, they'll basically add them into that trend and then they come up on the, on a, a, a completely new section of the site, which is trends. So, Oh, that's fascinating. You're getting straight in, in front of the buyer um, that's looking at what's going on and what the new things are happening. So that's a huge advantage for anyone uploading to Pattern Bank is to make something that's for the trend and name it for the trend and then you get more visibility on the site. Exactly, exactly. I'm not saying that every design you have to go, oh, look at that trend I've got. You know, look at also mm -hmm. look at, be proactive and look at, you know, what's happening uh, outside of Pattern Bank, you know, in on Vogue or or wherever, uh, and work into those trends as well. But but the ones that that we're we're highlighting, if you name your your trend with that trend title, then our, our moderation team that look at uploads, they'll basically put you into that trend, and the, you'll you'll come up in a separate part of the site. Nice. 
So are there any categories um, that are kind of considered classics and like always sell well, such as maybe florals or textured prints, things like that? Yeah, florals. Florals are, you know, our main women's wear and florals and geometrics, tropicals, tie dye, um, natural prints, nature prints and uh, sort of, like you say, textural prints. They're, They're always high on the searched um, parts of the site and on sales as well so and, and when I say florals you can just break it into so many different areas of like you know hand rendered um, vintage botanical um, painterly graphic floor you know there's, there's just so many and usually um, if you're a good designer you can sort of pick up on what what things are trend what florals are trending at that in that season or at that time and work into those so that's what yeah, definitely florals, tropicals and tie dyes and then nature prints. Um, we're seeing a lot of sort of ethnic sort of um, prints at the moment sort of uh, happening. Um, that's sort of bubbling under for, for, the, for the next season. So we, we try and keep an eye on things. Geos are big as well at the moment. It, it, but florals always sell. Nice. Okay, so your trend page includes like spring, summer and fall, winter trends. And so what is the best time of year for artists to be uploading designs for the next upcoming season? Or in other words, when are buyers actually looking for those seasons to buy? Okay, so I was looking at that and trying to work out when, you know, when's the times that the the site's really getting, you know, uh, looked at. And I've got to be honest, it's it's all year round because we're, we're online because we have global buyers uh, working on uh, multiple seasons, look, working on multiple products, it, there isn't, uh, you know, with, it, with this, the way that we are working now and with it being online, it's all the time. You have to constantly be uploading, basically. So it, there isn't, there isn't a, I can't give you an answer of like, yep, you've got to do it in February and March and September and august is it it's every, it's every month basically well that's kind of nice though because i think that allows the artist to be inspired by a certain trend instead of trying to do you know christmas designs in july when it's hot outside and maybe they're not feeling it you know what i mean um i think i think mix it up you know um work on stuff that's seasonal if it's sort of like you know uh look at the trade shows and the catwalks for what seasons they're working on and, and go into some of those uh, seasons but you know, yeah, mix it up. I would I would say you know, every month for us is a good month, and we're 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 always selling every month. There's no um, certain time, um, you know. So yeah, just all the every every month basically. <laughs> keep keep going. That's wonderful. That's awesome. Okay, so how often should designers be uploading new patterns? And the second part of that question are. You know, are designs shown in chronological order, or is there an algorithm on the site to kind of show design or show buyers certain types of designs? No. So basically, when you, I would say, try and you can't if you think that you can just come along and just sort of upload like two designs and then just sit back and just wait for the sales to come in. It that's not going to happen. You've got basically you've got you've got to take your Patent Bank profile page as like a mini studio um, and work professionally on it, you know, get the header looking great um, and start building that page, basically. So you need to keep uploading. I would say if you can, every week, upload designs. If you can't, every every two weeks, you know, um, it basically gets you seen as well on the site. So anytime you upload you basically go straight to the front of the queue. So you, it's, it's done in the newest is seen first. That's how we've got it. You can change it to most popular and A to Z, but uh, most buyers will look at it as in the newest design. They want, you know, that whole thing of going back to trends and what's fresh and what's new and stuff. They want to see the newest design. So um, I would keep uploading as much as you can, keep building, um, get your your profile page so it's nice healthy um you know weekly designs uploaded um in certain trends or you know uh or or whatever you're working on um so yeah i would say as as much as possible really uh we're getting like um 
600k page views per month so if you want to be seen in front of buyers you need to to keep uploading so you can't just sit back and upload eight designs and then wait six months and you need to you need to address it professionally and you need to sort of um, work at it really so that sounds really fair to everyone. So even if you're a beginner on the site, then your designs are going to be, you know, in the same queue, in the same order that if you've been on there a long time and you're a bestseller. So that's really fair and like encouraging for beginners and for new designers pattern, you know, that are new to Pattern Bank. Um, so what happens if someone types in, you know, like modern florals or they're typing in a type of search? Do bestsellers pop up? Is it again in chronological order or is it kind of what Pattern Bank thinks this buyer is going to want to see the most? It it, wor- it works. Um, so if they put in tropical, I don't know, pineapples or something, then it would basically look at the, 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 the words and tropical and pineapple, th- those would be at the top and it would be the newest um, designs as well. Okay. So, you know, talking about uh, getting your designs in front of buyers you know people don't have or when I was working uh, like Timberland and stuff you you haven't got much time to you haven't got hours of the day to sort of go through hundreds of pages so that's the whole point of you know me saying get your designs new designs uploaded because you'll get in front of the buyers um, because they won't go to page 25 or 30 they'll probably look at the first five pages if, if that um right. so so yeah that's that's the whole point of being frequent uploading um but yeah okay. it, it does it in in order of what the actual wording says and then it's the newest and the most relevant to that to that wording gotcha so it would be amazing for artists to be able to see the kind of what new keywords clients are searching for um and some sites do that like i think etsy and you know some other sites allow people to see kind of what keywords you know the customers are searching for but it sounds like maybe pattern bank is already kind of filtering that down with their trend page is that kind of how you guys approach it uh yeah i think so i think i, I think the trend you know like i say you you will go if your designs worked into a trend you'll go not only on the the new arrivals page but you'll go into that trend area and they can look at those designs there um but uh i think we're we're sort of you know we've worked it so uh, design uh, buyers will find what they need to find if they they tap in the right stuff um yeah i don't know what's perfect yeah no that's i mean it just in terms of like seo and kind of you know getting ahead to you know i think some sites allow you to kind of see what keywords are kind of rising up so that you can say oh like this is popular on the site so i'm going to make that for you know said customers but it sounds like yeah, like yeah we're definitely looking at the we've got new developments planned for this year and, and next year um and the designer dashboard is something we we want to look at we want to give the designer more information to to see what's selling uh, on the site we do our designer newsletter every couple of months that we you know we uh, flag down what trends are happening and what sort of things are selling um, but yeah, we want to sort of up the ante on that, and that's something we're we're looking at uh, developing. Where hopefully the the designer dashboard will will give you more information to help you work into certain trends or certain things that are really are hot at the moment, or what buyers are after at the moment. Nice, that would be amazing. So if you're not on Pattern Bank's newsletter, go ahead and sign up for that because they'll give you a little more you know insights in terms of what buyers are looking for that month. Um, up until then. So how would you describe patterns um, maybe that look the most commercial and what characteristics do those patterns have? Uh, again, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to keep going on about the on trend <laughs> thing. You know, it's, it's basically something that's on trend um, is in my eyes, commercial, um, something that's got good color use, um, something you could see on a on a product whether it's apparel or uh, giftware or homeware um and yeah have a look at you know that's why research in the market you know you, you, the designers need to also look at what's happening um and design into that um because then that's what the buyers are after you know they're looking for something that commercial that that can sell basically that's that's the the the, the thing of it that they need to 
they need to buy something that they can put on a product and sell so that's why it needs to be commercial so so on trend is is still a key key factor gotcha so your newsletter suggests that designers maybe edit update or delete designs um, and can you explain why that should be a priority for artists and how it might affect their sales maybe if they have designs on there that aren't selling very well or things like that yeah again again it's sort of you know uh, taking your uh pan bank profile as a thinking of as a sort of design studio um and think about how they work you know that they're, they're always updating they're always showing new collections if your if your profile's just got stuff that's old and you know you've got i don't know 12 20 pages of designs that you've uploaded last year or six months ago and you haven't uploaded anything else it might be time to to look at those see what's sold um and maybe either delete them uh edit them maybe recolor them you know a certain color might be happening you know a pantone color or uh you know a yellow for for whatever uh, season it is maybe recolor something you know and then re-upload it and then basically that will go to the front of the queue and it will refresh your your profile page so when i when we say about edit update and delete it's just a spring clean but maybe keep thinking of that you know as a professional designer that you don't want a, a buyer to keep going back to your profile page and it looking the same it's so nice to have it sort of updated remove things that aren't selling or you know you feel that you can update to make a more commercial and more trend right for for today or you know so yeah that's that's the whole point on that okay so what percentage of pattern bank customers are in either the fashion industry or home decor stationery, accessories you know what are the industries that you see maybe the most prominent on the site yeah the the biggest one for us obviously is is the fashion industry for us <laughs> is is i roughly it's about 60 70 percent i would say is the fashion yeah. industry you know, broken into women's wear, active wear, swim wear, men's wear, kids wear. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, women's wear is is a massive chunk. Active wear is a massive chunk for us, and swim wear, mm-hmm. and then um, men's wear and kids wear a smaller sort of uh, chunk. Um, and then I would say sort of fifteen percent sort of home interiors, and maybe fifteen percent uh, stationery and accessories. But that's a, a rough sort of uh, um, you know a percentages. It, it changes, but our biggest area is probably the the fashion industry uh for for women's wear as well yeah and it makes sense i think fashion makes perfect sense because it is usually like fast moving and so they can just get designed so quickly um do you think there's a reason why home decor and stationery and gift aren't but you know coming to pattern bank more often and are you looking to kind of grow those segments of your customer base yeah we 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 you know we still see it bought you know we see uh, buyers that are, you know it's really nice to see different products rather than from dresses and and active wear it's nice to for when we see them on bottles you know water bottles or uh i don't know on masks now you know well, i don't know it's slightly fashion but but you know it's it's um yeah i i, I think that we want to grow the 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 homeware area um mm-hmm. so yeah it's just something on our on our radar that we're looking at really to push that further but yeah, and w- you know, the the masses are the fashion side, and like you say, it's the quick sort of turnaround. They want the you know what's happening. I think home is a bit more. I don't think if if it's slower or if they're a bit more um, future thinking, uh, you know. So they need to. It's a slightly different sort of industry uh, and the patterns they're right. looking for. So, um, but yeah, something it's definitely something we're 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 pushing and we want to we want to um, uh, develop more. Yeah, I come from a home decor background. I worked as a textile designer for seven years and um, and mostly designing rugs and pillows. And I feel like home decor kind of follows fashion. So they're a little bit behind uh, the fashion industry, but they still want to follow trends and things like that. But it's a slower moving. Like if you buy a rug, you know, if someone buys a rug, they're usually not going to throw it out the next season, right? They're going to have it for, you know, five to 10 years maybe. So um, it is definitely a different industry. And um, I believe in you know trade shows buyouts for home decor because it is a more expensive product and it has more longevity. Those prices are a little bit higher. I mean, but it sounds like you charge the same flat prices across industries, right? 
flat flat across the whole site on the licenses yeah okay. so that would actually be good you know benefit the home decor companies <laughs> they get a nice well, you know decor. also i've worked with a lot of the trend uh, interiors guys as well and they they feel that they're ahead of the fashion industry that they're looking further ahead mm-hmm. you know so it's you know it's whether whether they're thinking that and they they need to be further ahead and i don't know yeah, and I'm sure European markets are different from the American markets as well in, in home. They tend to be trendier. <laughs> so um, do the exclusive license designs or the non-exclusive licensed designs sell better overall on the site? Is there one that buyers prefer, prefer more over the other? The, uh, the, the standard non-exclusive is our sort of big, uh, the, that license, you know, the, the commercial, pers- uh, personal commercial and commercial unlimited that's the big seller for us that's the the main uh transactions um are through the standard designs but that's not to say premium for us is doing very well you know uh, it's a uh, obviously you know uh, money wise the designer makes more on the on the premium exclusive and they are they are selling well so we we're, we're again wanting to push that area we're, we're talking about doing a uh, a big marketing campaign for the premium uh, exclusive area uh, this year so we're we're really sort of pushing that area and that's an area we want, we want to develop as well so it right. mainly mainly the standard designs are selling um, but the premium designs are a, a close second have you thought about maybe telling the the buyers or the customers how many times a standard license has sold because if it's sold maybe twice then it seems like they'd be more likely to buy it, but if they're kind of on that edge of like, oh, like, do I want to buy exclusive or standard, you know, and they see something that's been bought a hundred times, they might, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it, yeah, it's something we thought about. Um, we, we, you know, we're not sure, sure if it's going to be a, a positive or a negative, you know. So uh, right. we've sort of held back on that uh, for the moment. Um, but yeah, it's something, it's something we can we're, we're definitely uh, keeping track of, and when we update the site as we do you know through the through the years and with new um, exciting developments we've got planned going forward is something that could uh, that could that could happen as well okay so some people were asking um, you know what percentage does pattern bank make in the artist so when a design sells what percentage goes to the artist and what percentage goes to pattern bank so it's it's split down the middle it's 50 50 it's it's nice and simple 50 percent goes to the um, designer and 50% goes to Patent Bank um, and we basically it's it's a costly exercise actually you know developing and and running Patent Bank so we sure. basically sure. reinvest a lot of that money back into the site um, and we're constantly updating the site every month we're doing work on the site so and we've got a new chunk of work planned for 2021 um, that's going to go through um, so we're basically reinvesting back in, into the account, uh, into the, um, mm-hmm. uh, into the site to, to keep ahead That's of fair. our competitors. That's super fair. I mean, I think a lot of sites don't offer 50% to the artist. So if you're a designer watching this, then definitely take note of that. I, I don't want to get this wrong, but I believe Spoonflower only gives about 10% to the artist. And a lot of, you know, I've never even really tried to sell on Spoonflower because it was such a low percentage. But, um, yeah, I think that's super fair. 50-50 is, you know, it, that's very fair. Um, so when an artist uploads designs uh, to Pattern Bank under the standard license, are they able, I mean, with the, non, with the exclusive license, it makes sense that you would only be able to sell that design on Pattern Bank because the buyer is thinking they, you know, they own the copyright. But if it's the standard license or non-exclusive, can they then sell that design on other platforms or is it only on Pattern Bank? We, we prefer um, design uploads to Pattern Bank to be exclusive to Pattern Bank. This, this just gives us a, a point of difference for our buyers. So it's a, a more of a unique experience for our buyers. So, you know, if, if, if your design's on Pattern Bank and it's on, I don't know, Redbubble or Society6 or wherever, um, mm-hmm. for our buyers that's not really a it's not a unique sort of experience and you're it's a bit confusing because they're they're buying a, a design license that they can use on a product but they can see they can it can be bought as a product over on Redbubble or whatever so we say that that um, designs that are uploaded to Pattern Bank 
should be exclusive to Pattern Bank. It do, that doesn't stop you from designing another five designs and those ones go on to red bubble you know and stuff like that um but we just want designs that go to pattern bank not to be used on red bubble and society six and, and uh, the like just just so we have that um, point of difference from from those other sites yeah that makes sense and i think overall that helps everyone right because if buyers have that trust in pattern bank they're going to buy more on pattern bank and you know, the artist is getting 50% of that commission rather than, you know, something that they might get on Redbubble. I'm not sure exactly what the percentages are on other sites, but I feel like it's probably not that high. Um, okay, so when an artist sells a design, they're able to see who the client is and click over to the client's profile. However, there isn't any further information uh, or way for maybe the artist to follow up with the client. Does Pattern Bank plan, uh, you know, to add any functionality there or would it be beneficial um, do you guys see it as beneficial or maybe even hurtful that um, for clients to strengthen that relationship between the artist and the client? Yeah, it's sort of a yes and no sort of uh, answer. You know, we are looking at, like I said before, upgrading the um, designer admin area for insights. Um, but we sort of think about if you're if you're designing for a, um, another. Uh, studio, uh, say a bigger textile studio, sometimes you'll find out who the design sold to and you might be like, whoa, that's amazing, you know. But then sometimes the design might go with a sales rep out to Japan or whatever and you, and you won't find out where it's... So we're sort of, you know, it, they get the information but we don't, we don't really want them to be contacting the buyer to, you know, it, it, we try and make it as professional as possible and have it so if there's any problem with with the design then they come through to pattern bank and it's dealt with with us and we obviously speak to the designer okay. and so we're trying to sort of have a bit of a professional sort of break where you know they're not contacting the buyer and saying oh you know how's that design and you know we're just trying to keep it as professional as possible and we, and we f yeah. feel at the moment that you know if you give them too give the designers too much information we don't want you know they're, they're probably going to be complete fine but you'll get one or two that might harass the buyer or you know that sort of thing so it's something we're looking at it's not it's not ruled out but um we try and keep it as professional as possible and if they is if there's any problem with the design they come but the buyer would come back to us um and we sort of have it as they get the information of who who bought the design but that's as far as it goes at the moment right and it seems like a lot of different sites have different you know, theories on that, like with Etsy, you can private message back and forth. Um, but it's very, it's a very customized experience, right? Um, whereas with Pattern Bank, you just, if you like the design, you buy it. If you don't, you don't. Um, there's not, you know, you aren't offering any really personalization to it. Um, however, it, you know, it goes both ways. Like you don't want the client to be harassed, but also the artist as well, because um, I sell some things on Creative Market, for example, and most customers are awesome, but occasionally you'll get a customer who doesn't understand what they're buying, that it's a digital product or that they need Photoshop or Illustrator to be able to use it, and they want a refund, and it's a, you know, you can't really offer refunds for a digital product, so it gets, it can get complicated. Um, yeah, if, the, if, there's ever a time, if there's ever a time where we need to, the, the designer needs to speak to the buyer, then we, we will do that, you know, we, 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 we've done that before. But usually we try and keep it sort of as professional as possible and we try and deal with it uh, with if there's any problems and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, any big studio, they wouldn't want the designer going through to, you know, contacting uh, the company that bought it. Do you know what I mean? We're just, we're just trying to keep it professional, basically. Right. OK, so do you have any other? Oops, sorry. Do you have any other tips or advice on the quality of design uploads? What's, what's your cat called, by the way? <laughs> She's Luna. <laughs> Luna? Luna. We've, we've got a cat Hi. called Luna. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. very good. She's an old lady cat. She's 14 and a half. So. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, so tips on for designers. Basically, um, yeah, quality quality sells. That's, that's, you know, we all know that. Um Make sure designs are fault free. There's no repeat errors um, in the in the repeat tile. No messy um, edges or, or you know messy um, design 
lines or whatever. I know recently I had someone, we had to give a refund because of a uh, really nice design, but when you zoomed in, the actual lines weren't connected or, you know, it just a bit, it wasn't up to par, the, the design. So make sure that they're, they're good quality. Um, make sure the files are organized well in the, in the vector or in the PSD. So, you know, there isn't like, I don't know, um, 25 layers of just mess all over the place. Make sure they're, they're sort of, the elements are, uh, professionally layered. That's a, that's a, a, a big, um, yes for, for when you're uploading, um, make sure, you know, I'm going to keep banging on, make sure they're commercial and they're on trend, you know, um, yeah. that's going to, that's going to be a, a, a yes for the, you know, all designs are, it's not done by computer. All designs that are uploaded are are viewed by our um, experienced uh, uh, moderation team. So they look at the the design, the quality. They look at the repeat. They look at the tags. Uh, they look at the. They sometimes they spot check and download the file. Make sure that there is layers. You know, it isn't just two layers of you know um, uh, not good enough. Um, so yeah, we we look at all designs. So it's a, it's a lengthy process, but we do want the quality to to show through on on the Patent Bank Studio. So yeah, quality sells. That's what I'd say. You know, definitely um, professional and quality designs uh, are good to upload. Mm-hmm. Frequent uploads. I think I've said before. Um, design design into trends. Uh, look at the runway. Think like a professional studio. You know, think is you know. I know the designers on their own they're designing, but think as though that they're they are a brand or they are a studio, and how they would present their work and stuff. Um, right. Keep their profile. Designers, yeah, I think designers a lot of times kind of they don't know which site to be on, so they'll put two designs on Pattern Bank and three designs on Redbubble or a few designs on Etsy, and then they're kind of you know trying to test out a million different things, but. Like to your point, if you treat it like a studio and you just focus on one platform and, you know, definitely Pattern Bank is the best. (laughs) But if you focus on one platform, then you're going to see that growth and you're going to start to see sales coming in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, and we're not, we could, we could, you know, we're not saying that you just have to stay on Pattern Bank and you can't go anywhere else and stuff like that. We're not, we're not like that. You know, we want everyone to, to, to do well in, in all areas. Um, but just on Pattern Bank, just just make it make it the quality, the the professionalism, um, have a unique selling point. You know, um, I worked for this uh, retail um, designer years ago um, back in London, Red or Dead. He was one of his main things was um, unique. Have a unique selling point. So don't just copy everyone. Don't copy anyone anyway. But don't just copy and do the same have your unique spin on it you know um if it's if floral painted florals are doing really well have your unique spin on on those florals you know so incorporate your own style so while we're on the subject of style i just wanted to quickly tell you that i have a mini course that's totally free over on my website it's called art style secrets and you get three free video lessons all about how to develop your art style so if you're interested in that go over to my website and check it out the link is in the description all right let's hop back in yeah so you stand out basically stand out from you know with style um so that's, that's a key point. I think unique selling point with the trend and the quality, uh, you know, pointers that I'm talking about and the frequent uploads, I'd say unique selling point, you know, be be different, um, but commercial. Um, so you're, you're looking like a professional studio, uh, your profile. Um, I've got down relevant titles that are, that are relevant. So when people are searching, um, so say if you've done a pineapple design, Make sure you've got pineapple in the title, so when we when they search, it comes up. Um, use the tags, use the keywords. Um, choose colors that you could see in production. Um, so that means that don't just pick some random colors of a design. Have a have a story, you know. Have sort of you know whether you've seen it on the catwalk, whether you've seen it on a really nice uh, um, art exhibition or or something, you know. Uh, think about color you know um be subtle sometimes um and play around with color um 
so yeah, just 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 colorway. Think about color as your your designer as well. Uh, and then I've got Go Social um, at the end. Once you've uploaded your design, it's been approved. It's been earmarked as a editor's picks. You know, it goes in a, sec- a different section. It's been highlighted. Um, then Go Social. You know, get yourself on Instagram and Pinterest and uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, LinkedIn. You know, get your designs out there. You know, it's it's no harm in in spending. 15 20 minutes plugging your designs on your social your professional social um avenues um and channels just to just to get the design out and then we you know we'll also market it as well with our um editors picks that we send out emails new arrivals uh, in the trend areas um so yeah so so go social do you know which or do you have data on which social sites maybe bring in the most traffic to pattern bank um, I would assume it would be more Instagram and Pinterest, maybe even also LinkedIn. Um, but do you have any stats on that? Pin- Pinterest is massive for us. Uh, it's okay. a real puller of, of traffic. And Instagram as well is is an amazing marketing uh, area for us. Mm-hmm. We're on 111,000 followers for, for Instagram. And I think it's 5 million um, views on Pinterest or something. So mm-hmm. that's what you know. Once you once you get your site, you get your designs uploaded onto onto Pattern Bank. Once then we put them onto the social areas. You're you you you're 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 global. Um, so okay. So once you upload a design to Pattern Bank and it's approved, does it automatically go on Pattern Bank's Instagram and social platforms, or do you need to like post it and then tag? No, we or? we we post it. We post it. We 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 choose the strongest ones. Um, if they're trend right, if they're if they're worked into a trend, if they're editors' picks, um, if there are new arrivals that we think, oh, wow, that's an amazing design, then we will highlight those as a as a of an Instagram or a Pinterest. Nice. Okay, so you mentioned color. Um, so one of the other questions I had was, should artists be working with Pantone colors and, you know, what color mode is recommended? Is it RGB or a hex code or CMYK if you're working, you know, digitally? Um, well, we have, you know, we've got the, I think you were saying about the, also about the extra assets area that we that we have. Um, there's a bit where you can add in extra assets. So so once you've, you've uploaded the... Um, the, the repeat tile and then the PSD. There's a there's a box where you can add in like scans of the the drawings and stuff like that, or new uh, uh, Pantone breakdowns or extra colorways. You can add those in, um, and they they're they're a real sort of pull for buyers. So um, as long as they're they're mentioned in the uh, description, um, they're an extra thing that you can that that can sell and get. Uh, more attractive to the buyer yeah i was definitely wondering about that within those you can... sorry <laughs> go ahead <laughs> go ahead i was gonna say within oh, those yeah. you can put in the pantone references because we do have okay. buyers not every buyer but we do f- from time to time get buyers that say we're after the pantone references for these designs um and then we have to go back to the the designer and say can you break them into Pantone for us or or we'll take them on Adobe Color and try and break the, the colors down. But if you can, you know, um, add those in as an extra asset. Um, and when you're saying about Pantone, which which ones, I would say the Pantone, um, the, the T, the cotton breakdown uh, Pantone. Okay, so I think now it, they've changed it, but I think now it might be TPG. Yeah, something like um, that. I, I didn't know. I didn't want to say which one it was because I want. Yeah, <laughs> I used to work in TCX, which was yeah the cotton. But, yeah, yeah, but... that that one I think is probably the standard one that most people want. But any okay. co- any color breakdown Pantone would, is good is good really. Because most of your buyers are working with soft goods and textiles, so they want that textile you know pantone system because pantone has a lot of different systems if you're new or if you're a beginner pantone has you know systems for graphic designers you know systems for web designers things like that but p 
most of the buyers on Pattern Bank are buying for soft goods and textiles, so you want to be working in the textile system. Um, and so, yeah, that question I was going to ask you, like, how important were those extra assets to clients? And it sounds like they really like them, but um, it looks like on the, you know, on the listing, they can't um, see the original drawings or the scans. Um, so, you know, how much would do you think it affects their buying decision? And if they were between two designs, maybe, and one had all these extra assets, would that help? Then make a decision. Yeah, I think so. You know, some designers are amazing, and they put down, you know, list down what what extra is in in the actual commercial license, and it will say, you know, color breakdown, Pantone references. It will say scans of the drawings. It will say four extra colorways. You know, so for a buyer, that you know that stands out a hell of a lot more than if it just says um, no, you know, no extra, no extra details or anything or no extra files so it's definitely a plus you know if you can if you've done the if you've drawn the 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 uh whatever it is or you've got the sort of initial work if you've got that already scanned in it's no hassle to add it to the um the upload process and then mention it in the descriptions we are looking uh, again it's in development work that we're going to review but we're looking at possibly having some sort of preview of what you can see on the extra assets. So, so you'd be able to see what colorways and what extra scans and stuff like that. So that's something that we yeah. we're reviewing, um, on this, uh, the next stage of development work. So it is yeah, something that, in there. I think that would be helpful because, um, from, I think from the designer's perspective, it's like, well, they can't see the colorways and adding color, you know, adding colorways is extra work. A scan isn't really, but, you know, colorways is extra work and we get paid the same, right? We're not getting paid any extra for extra colorways, but if it helps affect the buyer's decision to buy my artwork versus someone else's, then I might be willing to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, or we look at like an extra tab where you have to click and it, you know, the the the, the price goes up a little bit if you've got extra colorways, stuff like that, you know. So it's something, something that we've, you know, we're always evolving. We're trying to keep ahead of our competitors. So, yeah, it's something that we're 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 developing, and and we'll keep keep everyone posted about uh, on new developments. Great. So, according to your data, do vector or raster so, uh, files sell better on Pattern Bank? So, basically, you know, people who work in Illustrator versus Photoshop, or does it matter? Because I've seen some, you know, designers online talking about how you need to work in vector, but you know, I see other designers where, you know, maybe they're a watercolor artist, and that's really not an issue at all. So, do you see one selling better over another? Um. I was all for the vector side of things. You know, I, I love vector and, you know, uh, yeah. how you can easily change, change colors and, and, but, but all the buyers are different. You know, everyone's different. Some people want uh, to do it as a digital print. Some people want to do it as a screen print. Some people just send it to their printers and they just, the printers will sort it out and they don't care if it's, if it's vector or not, you know. So, um, we still love vector. You know, um, I would say that 70% of our sales are sort of uh, PSD sort of uh, Photoshop files. And then, you know, 30%, 30%, 40% are vector. Um, they're still, you know, like I say, every buyer is different and everyone wants something slightly different. Um, so vectors are still, you know, uh, they still rock. Um, and, you know, if we see an amazing vector design and, it, you know that's it, on the on the upload and new new arrivals and it's amazing we'll put it in editors pick so we don't really it's just what the buyer wants you know and what they need for their end product right if yeah if someone's doing a digital print then it probably doesn't matter but um for certain companies they may only work in vector because they want the ability to scale up without losing quality and you know yeah i love vector too i started out as a graphic designer so <laughs> that's what i learned on um, okay, so does Pattern Bank only accept repeat prints or patterns, um, or can artists also upload placement prints? Um, for example, you know, I mentioned I used to be an in-house textile designer, and I designed a lot of rugs and pillows that simply had placement prints. Um, they didn't need to be in repeat. And in fact, my art director would often give the criticism um, that a rug looked, you know, too much like fabric, which meant, you know, it maybe looked too re repetitive or, um, you know, so repeats might not be ideal for you know, maybe some home decor items or other, maybe even stationary um, in certain instances. Um, so 
I guess the question is, can you upload both or is one preferred over the other? You, you can. You can upload. We prefer, and I think our buyers prefer, um, that designs are in repeat format. So that, I think that is the preferred uh, purchase. But if a design is, um, if it's in a, if it's for a placement, if it's, you know, it's been designed as a placement print, then you can click on the upload, you can click placement print. So we do offer um, the, the examples where you can um, upload as a placement print. But okay. the system works better with repeats and I think the buyers like um, the repeats. And if we, if we see a design that's uploaded um, in the moderation queue um, and it's not in repeat, but it looks like it should be in repeat, we'll reject it and say this design should be in repeat you know um whether design's been design has been lazy or you know not putting it into repeat um but i would say buyers unless it's specifically for a placement they want it in repeat so i would say sure. nine out of nine out of ten times it's best to have it in repeat so other artists may wonder if they could ever sell an illustration that included, you know, several several supporting or maybe blender patterns on Pattern Bank to accommodate different markets. Like I think that's um, popular in, you know, stationery and things like that to maybe have an illustration and then some supporting patterns that went with it as a little mini collection. Um, would Pattern Bank ever, you know, maybe offer options like that? Um, yeah, I think, well, we're... we're definitely we'd um is that the is that you think you're talking about the actual credit in the design or are you talking about no not yet um i was talking about just having that optionality so instead of only uploading like you know maybe a um a placement print that's just it's you know sold as a single file or you know a, a repeat pattern that's sold as a single file you know would pattern bake maybe offer an option that has a collection where it's a placement print or an illustration, you know, think of something that might go on um, a greeting card or, you know, a little illustration that had maybe some supporting or blender patterns that went with that illustration. Oh, I see, like a, like a little collection or something like that. Yeah. Um, it, isn't, it isn't in our, our development plan, um, but it's definitely mm -hmm. something we can, we can look at, you know, we, we definitely bring that up. Um, you th yeah, because we, you're talking about sort of having a, a design collection so you could design so you could have a yeah with it's something that we've talked about um and we need to we need to look at it look into it and see if it's if it's relevant and if the buyer would mm -hmm. would be interested in buying that and then what license that would you know work out to be right because I guess the reason why I ask is because a lot of times at trade shows that's how artists will show their work as a collection and they'll sell the whole collection as opposed to just singles. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's something that we can it's definitely something we can look at, but at the moment it, you know you I think focusing on your your um design profile and getting that looking professional sure. is is the key key at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the wonderful thing about Pattern Bank is that artists don't have to make that big investment, you know, up front to go to a trade show um, in order to meet clients. And, you know, Pattern Bank just kind of serves as that platform where client, you know, it brings buyers and, uh, and artists together. Um, you know, trade shows can be really expensive and it can take a lot of time to see a positive ROI or return on investment in order to do that. Um, but the downside of that for the artist is that they kind of remain anonymous on the site. I mean, you can see, you know, the artist profile and things like that. But in a traditional licensing contract, an artist, you know, can negotiate to have their name or brand um, on the product that's using their art. And so that kind of gets their name out there. Um, and companies, you know, such as Anthropology or Target will often do like an artist spotlight and do like an entire collection of products with that artist's work. Um, and so I guess my question is, would Pattern Bank ever consider adding, you know, another license that would give the artist a little bit more exposure to kind of the end consumer in both like retail and e-commerce um, worlds? Yeah, it's something, it's something that we, we have had buyers, you know, uh, contact us and ask for the designer names and, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, that they're OK to use that on the uh, be credited for the design and stuff like that. And we're completely cool with that. Um, 
having it down to the to linking it with a licensing deal where they're they're credited yeah we'd need to look into that i think it's something that it's possible it's possible um but i think with how things are we don't want it to get too confusing for the for the buyer uh i think i think thinking about how the buyer will purchase um is is key and trying to keep it as simple as possible um so yeah so something, something we again that we can look into um but not at the moment Cool. Okay, so that is all of my questions for today, but we have a lot of questions in the comments. So if you're able to stick around a few more minutes, I'll go through some of those questions. I'll try and I'll try and ask a answer a couple. Okay, cool. All right, let's. Is your cat still there? Yeah, she's here in my lap. She's joining the show. <laughs> okay, so um, one question is: Yes, it would be great to upload. Are they a comment? Yes, it would be great to upload designs as collections by the same theme or color palette. Um, Daniela asks, do Photoshop files need to be indexed? Mm, no, they don't need to be. No, okay. if, if they want, you know, again, they can add, add the indexed file to the extra assets. So they can do it as a basic um, Photoshop file and then they can index it and add that as a extra asset and then flag that in the description. Okay, and Heather asks, is it okay to work all on one layer? Mm, no. No. <laughs> That's what I thought. It, right. You know, I, I think design, certain buyers want certain things from prints, and, you know, some buyers will just take the print and they'll just give it to their printer or factory and get them to sort it out. But sometimes they want to edit the colour or they want to change the background or they want to remove a... I don't know, an element of the print. So that's why we think it's far um, more useful to give the layered file um, as much as possible. In a, you know, broken down in a professional way so they can remove a certain flower or, you know, it doesn't have to be every element has to be separated out, but at least if there's some sort of, to, you know, elements together that they can remove or they can move slightly. Some, some buyers want to do that some don't so we we if possible rather than just giving one flat photoshop file we want at least to be two or three layers so they can change the background or you know because some people work um, painterly watercolor and they might not be able to do you know 20 layers they might just have like two three layers but as long as they can the buyer can edit it somehow because we we do have it as a layered PSD when they, you know, that's how it's explained on the site. Does a vector or an AI file need to be layered by objects or by colors too? So, yeah, do AI files really need to be layered? No, no. I would say, you know, as long as they're as long as they're editable, that that they're not just a a, a traced, you know, um, trace scan or something like that. As long as they're they're editable. Uh, they can change the color quite easily if need be. Um, yeah, they don't need to be layered. It's, it's however the the designer works. But as long as they're 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 a professional sort of uh, vector file, uh, uh, that's that's what we're after. Right. So for those of you who might not be familiar with vector, you can very very easily just you know select things with the magic wand tool. You know you can select every color in the design, so layers aren't quite as important. But if you're in a raster file. From Photoshop, it you know it's a lot harder to select something. It takes a lot more time, um, so that's why having those layers you know kind of broken up you know makes it just a lot more quick for the buyer to edit things if they need to. Um, so Kathy asks, how do artists get paid? They get paid via PayPal at the end of the month. Uh, well, it's the twenty eighth, I think they get paid. So we work from the twenty sixth to the twenty sixth. So. Um, Basically, at the end of that month, uh, they get a statement, and they on their profile they'll they'll see if they've sold. Hopefully, you know, load of designs. It will come up on their statement that they're owed X amount, and then that money goes directly paid out on the twenty eighth. I think it is twenty seventh, twenty eighth of the month, uh, directly to their PayPal account. Gotcha. So we used to do it. So they as soon as a uh, a design was sold, the buyer would get the money straight away. 
Um, but we actually had problems with that where, you know, if there was a, a refund or if a, a design a buyer came back and said, I, I, I don't, you know, this design's not good enough. Um, we had problems. So basically we did it at the end of the month, but everyone gets paid at the same time. You get a statement on your profile explaining how much you've made um, and that goes directly into your PayPal account. So, it's, you know, it's fairly simple. As long as you've got a PayPal account that, that um, accepts uh, payments, then we can pay you. Okay. And Narissa asks, um, do designers get paid in British pounds on Pattern Bank? <laughs> they do. They do. Pounds. Yeah. GBP. Because we're UK, it has to be pounds. <laughs> That's nice for us in the US. It means you get paid a little more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, most of the stuff that I've gone through there, you know, I think, you know, there's some key points, commercial, on trend, quality design, keep uh, frequent uploads, you know, um, so your your designer profile is, is always updated. Um, yeah, that's, you know, that's the, the main thing, make sure that the, the designs are, are good and um, you work into the trends. I think that's the key sort of points that I was trying to bring up. Yeah, all of your advice has been incredibly helpful. I think that, you know, encouraging the des designers to treat it like a studio, like a, almost like a full-time job um, is really helpful because, you know, you can really, I mean, it's just, it's not that hard to grow. And you, when you know that designs are shown in chronological order, then you're more encouraged to upload more consistently. So Inga Design says, if for any reason an artist is refused, is it possible to get um, professional hints or feedback on how to improve or what to improve. So if you're rejected from the site, will they tell you kind of why and what you can improve on, I guess is what she's asking. Mm, yeah, well, the, the thing is, because we're global and we get, you know, hundreds every week of uh, <laughs> applications, we can't go back to everyone and go, you know, try and try do some so it we unfortunately not um you know we don't have a a second sort of uh chance of getting in either so that's why at the beginning we talked about put your best work up front um when you when you apply um and that's that's how you get in you know if you're not right you know sorry but it's just how it's we we've, we've got to look at what's relevant to our buyers so you know, like I say, if you're not right for us, I'm sure you're going to be right for another studio or another uh, marketplace that you can sell on, um, but just m might not be right for Patent Bank. Okay. Um, Angela asks, is Pantone a must or can designers work in RGB or CMYK? Uh, they can do, they can do. It's, it's an extra bonus if, if you can get the Pantone uh, within the files. I think, you know, buyers, you know, working in the industry, you, you get to know that you you can't just give a, a, a file, a CMYK okay, file to a printer and go, uh, you know, just print that. And it's, you need in the process, you need to sort of um, match it up with Pantone references. So, you, net, you know, the color is going to be right, because if someone's printing it um, halfway across the globe, you can't be sure that their printer is going to print out the same as you. So that's why Pantone is, is important to, to make sure color is right. You know, so if you can add the Pantone, if you can, um, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's sort of, uh, a professional way would be to, to, to say included Pantone colors as well. Right. And that's interesting too. And I'm sure it depends on the company, but from an artist's perspective, they might assume that the whoever's buying their design might put their own colors on it anyway. But if they're just buying it straight from you and printing it out, it needs the colors need to be correct, right? And Pantone is the best way to know if they're correct. Okay. So another person asks, please tell me more about light boxes on Pattern Bank. Light boxes, yeah. So we've got an area which our buyers use and also designers can use as well. Um, where you can basically a bit like uh, I think it was well it's a bit like a, a, a Pinterest where you can create folders and and, and select um, 
designs that go in there and it, we basically had it for des, uh, buyers for for them to create if they're working on a collection uh and they can basically create a light box of designs they like um and then they're they're stored in a uh, the light box section of the the pattern bank studio and they can actually share that light box with another uh pattern bank user to check um uh the the designs they've selected so it's it's like a you know it's like a storage area some people use it for um you know inspiration sort of um storage some buyers use it for you know building their collection to review with their with their um their bosses or whatever you know in in a uh, in a meeting Okay, and someone asks, have I understood right that the designer has rights to go through the application process only once? And I understood that as yes, only you have one chance. Unfortunately, right? we we take it, you know, I know it's we take it as in it's a, as a, a job interview. You know, if you were going to a studio, say one of the big studios and you went in and you showed your work and they said, sorry, but you're not quite right for us. That's that's it, you know, Um I know it's harsh, but it's that's why it's so important to show your best work at the beginning. Um, and you know, if you want to work on, you know, if you really want to get in to Pattern Bank, look at the, you know, look at the work we've got on the quality of work, um, and you know, show your work to that to that quality. Because we could, we you know, we could let everyone on, but that would defeat the object of the curating Pattern Bank because our team who go through all the uh, design applications um, have got um, over 25 years of experience in, in design uh, and textiles. So we sort of know what's, you know, what, what is relevant and what sells. So that's, that's, right. how, that's why we are, uh, you know, that's why we go through the process. Okay. Daniela asks, do we see who has bought our design so that we can see how the design has been used? <laughs> so, yeah, I think we picked up on this earlier. You get to you get the name of the person that's bought the site, but you can't get uh, more information. And we're, at the moment, it's something that I'm going to bring up at our next development um, meeting. Um, and we are talking about updating the designer admin area. So it might be something that, that's linked in with that, that you can see possibly uh, more information about who bought the design but it's, it's something I need to look into yeah um Electra asked do designs need to be color separated too and I think we kind of touched on in vector no in raster or photoshop files that would probably be preferred or helpful yeah again color separate yeah in vector no you don't need to but in the uh the psd side of thing or the photoshop side if you can do a color separation file and add it as an extra asset, then that's a you know that's a, a that's a good um, positive thing for the buyer if they see that in the description. Okay, and Vibik asks, what about design protection um, or copyright? Yeah, copyright. We've we've had to go quite hard on copyright um, issues. Uh, again, you know that's the whole thing of us being quite strict at the beginning um that we just want good designers um and you know 99 percent of all of our designers on pattern bank are, you know they design with integrity but then you get the one percent that maybe copy stuff and so we have to be very very we are very careful on on copyright if we see anything that looks like it's been um there's any copyright infringement then we will either uh you know um stop the the designer will will we'll, um actually disable them so they can't use pattern bank um so yeah copyright is 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 a key factor that you know whatever you're uploading needs to be designed by yourself you need to have the approval of any if you've got any elements on there they need to be um 100% um uh okay for you to use so we we our main thing is to to design as much as you can you know do your own work um, because it stops any copyright problems or you know anything like that right and I think we touched on this earlier but 
in terms of who owns the copyright. Uh, if it's the non-exclusive license, the copyright stays with the designer, but if you're putting it as an exclusive kind of buyout, then once someone buys that design, the copyright goes to the buyer. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Mompf asks, how is the price of the design set? Does the designer set his price? Sorry, I'm new. <laughs> No, they're they're all set. We 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 did have it at the beginning where you could choose different settings and stuff like that. But we basically we look at it every year. But we we actually set the price for the personal license, the commercial license, the commercial unlimited, and the uh, premium license. So they're all set for you. Okay, and Anja asks, do the designer have to copyright? Um, their designs before uploading. So I think the answer is no, and it probably depends on your country on if you want to, it, I mean, depending on the laws in your country, like in the US, as soon as you create an artwork, you know, that copyright is automatically with you. You can still file with the copyright office if you want that extra protection um, just to make sure, but it does cost money, so most people don't do that. But depending on which country you're in, the laws may be different, but um, I'll let you answer, but I don't think you need to file. No, no, you don't need to file a copyright. As long as it's, you know, if it's created by you, like you like you said there, that is, you you own the copyright. As soon as you design the, the actual design, that's your it's like when you take a photo that you own that photo so it's same with the design you know i pick up on the bit before copyright elements and infringement that as long as you've not used anyone else's elements and stuff like that um then you, if you're created the design yourself you own the copyright outright at the beginning okay sally says what if someone buys the premium buyout and you have the design on a print on demand site yeah that's not not oh that's not good <laughs> That you yeah you would be uh, yeah we would we would we'd probably email you and say to the, <laughs> we're reviewing your account if if you did that so that's why when we when I said before about having designs that are exclusive to Patent Bank um, yeah it, that's why it, you don't want it to get messy so design stuff for Patent Bank and then design other stuff for other sites that's what I that's what I'd say right don't put your designs on multiple sites it's not good. <laughs> It kind of hurts the overall, you know, business as well. And, you know, if you want to do well on Pattern Bank, then Pattern Bank needs to be doing well as a company. So it all yeah. kind of goes in the same bucket. Yeah. Right. Professional. Act professionally. Right. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I think we're about to sign off here unless anyone else has a last minute question. <laughs> it's, it's time for me to have a beer, I think. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's yeah, uh no, well eight eight, twenty eight, past eight in uh, in UK so oh yeah t definitely time for a beer okay one we'll have one more question guys and then we'll let Neil go enjoy his evening um, Daniela says what steps do Pattern Bank take to stop others from copying the uploaded designs well we you know our upload process you have to you have to tick I think it's like twice where all elements are. are are correct are done by you and you have uh, the authority to use any elements in there so we put it down to the integrity of the designer to to make sure that they're they're working um, professionally um, and ticking those boxes if we do hear of anything where someone's design has been copied um, on patent bank then we just um, reject we just uh, uh, disable that designer and they're gone yeah, I think she's worried. Some designers are worried about if they put their designs online that people will steal them or people will copy them. Okay, on that side of it, on on that side of it, we have like um, you can't download the files. They've got um, on all the files. They've got a uh, a quite intense watermark on the actual files. So even if they downloaded the file, they've got like a massive pattern bank um, sort of checky board with pattern bank scribbled all over it so for that side of it they they can't you know they can't download the uh, the artwork okay gotcha well neil thank you so much for coming on it's been that's all right thanks for having me I hope I, I hope I didn't bore everyone too much no i think you really helped answer everyone's questions and hopefully you'll have a lot more um, new artists you know that are energized to upload way more on pattern bank and hopefully some new um, applicants as well yeah, no, definitely. I look, look, look. Yeah, and you. Okay, take care. Bye, everyone.